What is going on, nerds of wrestling, and welcome to today's episode of What's Up Wrestler, a podcast by Nerds of Wrestling. It is I, your host, Justin Del Rio, and my guest at this very time is the Red Dog. What is going on, bro? How are you? <laughs> What's up? What's up, man? It's like, I'm glad that we finally got this thing kicked off, man. I'm hyped. Doing, I'm, I'm happy you're able to do this with me. Uh, it's, it's truly long overdue, if I, if I may say. Yeah, no, man. I just appreciate that you had me on the show. That's all. Of course, you know I, I knew you for for quite some time, bro. And uh, you you've been a, a huge supporter of Nerds of Wrestling for quite some time. And I want to say thank you for that. Yeah, no doubt, man. Like, uh, you know, it's it's something that I was definitely hyped about, and I wanted. Uh, I saw the opportunity to kind of kind of see and kind of pick your brain a little bit and see what you were doing. And yeah, man, this is just like. It's, it's been flying, man. It's been flying. It's been a great partnership, put that way. <laughs> Absolutely. Hell yeah, man. Uh, how have you been doing during these uh, these these crazy times, I want to say? Uh, what have you been up to? Man, like, now that everything's kind of starting to loosen up and everything's, like, just... I don't want to say it's, like, getting back to normal because we still have, like, all this, like, we still have all the precautions that we're still taking and stuff like that. But now that things are starting to loosen up and stuff and being able to go to shows and, like, work and then get back into everything, like, it's been it's been good, man. It's been good. So I've been I've been hyped, been able to hit up a couple of shows, definitely uh, definitely worked at a bunch of places now. So, yeah, everything's everything's worked out, man. I, I've been I've been I've been uh, not to take anybody else's stuff, man. So sorry, Casey, but uh, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Uh, you, you have been really, you know, kind of doing your thing, man. Uh, have you been keeping up with wrestling at all lately? Yeah. So, I mean, aside from, you know, me being a worker myself, man, like just watching pro, like watching pretty much everything from Monday through Friday, man, it's been tough, especially because like right now, you know, like impact's going to be on. So I'll probably have to catch that tomorrow anyway. But yeah, I've been I've been able to keep up with as much as I can, and I'm really trying to still expand out. But yeah, I mean, you only have so much time in a day, man. So you really can't you really can't do too much. But yeah, yeah I, I it's been it's been hyped as as much as I can watch. I've been able to watch. There's there's quite a lot of wrestling nowadays, and I remember I was talking to a colleague of mine a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about the amount of wrestling there is. It's absolutely impossible to keep up with. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I know that you said you tried your best to keep up with it. Uh, what are your thoughts on like the amount of wrestling we have nowadays? I have to I have to schedule my time all the time, right? So like on Mondays it's Monday Night Raw. On Tuesdays it's obviously NXT. Wednesdays we have Dynamite. Thursday I try to watch Impact. Um, and then at some time, some point in time between those four days, I'm trying to watch ROH and NWA, uh, and then trying to watch SmackDown. And then of course Rampage just got started up, so. Yeah, it's like I legit have to sit down and just schedule all my time to just make sure things work out. I can watch. And then really, because like we do the three count podcast as well. And I've been doing, uh, if you guys follow us on TikTok and IG or even on Clapper, right, you will see that we legitimately have the quick dives that come out every day. We talk about a couple of news articles that maybe were like popular for like overnight. And then, yeah, so it's it's a lot. So it's a lot of time management that I have to put in and just like try to make things work. It's kind of crazy to think that you had to adjust your schedule just for wrestling during the week. And you're not, I mean, like you're watching wrestling and you're not doing it yourself. Like you, you, you're, you want to watch all these shows. You want to try to catch up on all these shows. It's crazy to look back in like 2005 thinking there was only like Raw and SmackDown. All you had to worry about was, you know, Raw, Monday, SmackDown, uh, Friday, Thursday, whatever, when it was on. But now you're like, bro, I got to watch Raw. I got to watch NXT. I got to watch AEW, Impact, SmackDown. There's so much. And on top of that, there's way more wrestling you got to keep up with on the internet, such as New Japan, ROH, all these other independent promotions. You're trying to discover all these new wrestlers. All these new wrestlers are constantly debuting on all these platforms, and you're trying your best to like discover every little thing. It's like, it's crazy. It, it, it's insane. Yeah, it's it's hard, man. So like even for like me, man, like getting a ready debut for uh, SCWA or even going to um, C3W here in D.C. or, you know, trying to make my debut at Adrenaline Championship Wrestling, ACW in Baltimore. Like I'm trying to get myself out there. Meanwhile, still watch the product that's going on and then have, you know, still talk about it 
educationally and not just seem like some chump. It's, it's a lot of work, man. And like, just, it's, I, I pretty much burn both ends of the candlestick, man. Like just trying to make things work, man. <laughs> right. Uh, how, how did you really get into wrestling, man? Tell us uh, how you fell in love with the business uh, itself. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because I actually just talked about this with uh, Joey G, um, you know, friend, friend of our, our, our friend, mutual friend. So anyway, uh, yeah, man, I was, I was with my aunt, my aunt Brandy. Uh, she sat me down. She was like, Hey, have you ever seen this before? It was like Saturday morning, like 1992. And I was like, no, I don't know what this is. And she's like, just sit down and enjoy the, enjoy the show. And this man gets wrapped up in these ropes and this other dude takes out this giant Cobra and it just like bites this man. <laughs> And, uh, you know, come to, obviously it's, it's Macho Man and uh, Jake the Snake. But at the time, like, right. I had no idea who it was. But, like, watching that happen live, like, I got drawn to it. And I was like, does this happen every week? And she's like, no. And I was like, I can't see this show. Like, get out of my way so I can watch. And, uh, yeah, I just um, – I kind of fell out of it after that. But then, like, a couple years later, um, on WCW main event was going on. And uh, I remember watching Saturday afternoon. I saw this dude with, like, this long ponytail. And they had, like – blonde hair and he was just like laying in the crowd and he was just like come on baby and uh i was like that guy's cool and so the next week i watched again and that guy was back on and he was wrestling and uh they're like yeah this is the line hard chris jericho he's like and tune in next tune in monday to see monday nitro and i was like okay so monday on <laughs> tnt like i'm i'm watching uh dean malenko go out to the ring you know do his whole wrist thing that i by the way, I love watching him do that. Um, and then I see this dude in all pink come out, and he's this high flyer, and I've never seen him before. And then like that's when I like fell in love with like Rey Mysterio, and I was like, bro, this is like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, all those wrestlers you mentioned, you know, such as uh, Jake the Snake, Macho Man, Chris Jericho, Rey Mysterio. I, uh, out of all those wrestlers, you kind of slowly but surely discovered. Who caught your attention the most and who was your favorite out of all those those five or those four? Uh, you know, I think I think I found myself drawn to Ray the most. Um, and the reason why was like just growing up, like I was always kind of like the shorter kid. Like, even though like my mom will say argue that and she'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, you were like average. I was like, I was average for short. Uh, but Ray Mysterio was like, he was amazing and the things that he was doing, and then like the costumes, like I got drawn to because like at some one point he was dressed as Spider-Man, and another point he's dressed as the phantom right and so his costumes drew me in but then his work style was also was like super fly to watch you know he um one of my favorite matches was from halloween havoc in 97 with eddie guerrero where he hit that reverse ddt jumping off the top rope it's the only time you ever hit it but it was like one of the best things i've ever seen and and i just like i said like every time i see ray like even now like i'm just like dude like that's that's the person I was watching all through my childhood. And I'm just, I still get enamored just like watching him do his thing. A lot of people who mentioned Rey Mysterio as their favorite wrestler, they always go back to you know, Halloween Havoc 97 with their his match against Eddie Guerrero. Excellent match, amazing match, one of the best matches of all time, in my opinion, uh, in a lot of people's opinions. Um, honestly, if you're not a wrestling fan, I if you've never seen that match then. If you're a wrestling fan, if you've never seen that match, well, what the hell are you doing with your life? Go watch it right now. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, speaking of Rey Mysterio, man, he's doing this thing right now in WWE with his son Dominic. Uh, Dominic is killing it. I love what Dominic is doing uh, on the main roster. Uh, let me hear your thoughts on the Mysterio family. Yeah, so it's it's been interesting because like I remember when Dominic first debuted. Um, and Eddie Guerrero was there talking about how, you know, you're my son. It's like, I'm your puppy. <laughs> uh, and right. I remember seeing Dominic. And so like watching Dominic now, it's getting the same thing. I guess it's the same thing with like Bill Goldberg's son, because like seeing Goldberg's kid just last week on this last week on raw, like he's like, cause he was like this kind of chubbier kind of kid when you, when you last saw him and a few years later, here he is. And he's like all stout and stuff. And you're like, bro, right. like. So it's it's crazy to see like these guys like you know mature and like grow and like they're in the business now and you're like wow man like I don't know so watching Dominic do his thing especially when he got to work with Brock Lesnar and I know he got like destroyed but Brock bumped for him for a little bit and then you know Brock opened up a can of whoop ass but 
it's it's been cool. Right. It's been cool to watch them, and it's kind of fun to see like the father son duo like do their thing. Um, you know, I'm much because like even like in NWA, like with the Hawks, right? Um, watching the father son combo, I think it's it's kind of cool. You get to have like that that shared dynamic, like that you're not really gonna see anywhere else. Cause like, I mean, you have like the Usos and you have the Young Bucks and you have you have all these great brother teams, right? That are out there. And then here's these two father son duos. And you're just like, that's cool that you were able to hang in the game long enough just to have your kid come through and, and join you. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I completely agree. Before we uh, learn more about you, man, drop those plugs. Where can the nerds find you? Yeah, so you guys can find me on all social media platforms at the underscore red dog 85. So whether you guys see it here on uh, Twitter, IG, you can find it on TikTok. Uh, there's another site called Clapper. You can find me there. You can find me pretty much everywhere under that. And you guys can even go to my link tree, which is actually linktree.com forward slash the underscore red dog 85, just like that. And you guys can check out all the stuff I have merch stores, the podcast for the three count podcast. The podcast I do with nerds at a round table. So there's all sorts of like fun stuff out there that I do. So be sure to go check out the red dog. That is T H E underscore R E D D A double G 85. Uh, don't worry, I will get those plugs again at the end. You mentioned you have your own podcast, man. Uh, the three count podcast. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What's the three count podcast all about? Whoo, well, the three count podcast is uh. The Don, Chaz Evans, myself, uh, we have a lot of other people that join us with Anthony, uh, Lou, if you guys will know, Lou the Franchise, and we also have Chris Idol, Damian Fatal. So pretty much think about the Three Count Podcast as like uh, Around the Horn or Skip and Shannon, where you get a bunch of guys, adult men, who just argue about wrestling. <laughs> and that's us. That's us right there. <laughs> we debate topics and we debate shows. We, do, we do try to go live every Sunday on Facebook and YouTube. And then we have our second show, which is actually called uh, Now Entering the Ring, which Justin, yourself, you've been on that show. Um, so Now Entering the Ring is pretty much a wrestling podcast about wrestling for wrestlers, by wrestlers. Um, and then also I bring on other connections. So people who have worked in the movie industry, people who are authors, people who design gear, people who, you know, uh, will design you logos, whatever. So it's kind of like a how to, when you want to find your way through the business, we've had tons and tons of people on I think um, currently we're like at 158 episodes. So yeah, we just keep inviting wow. more and more people to come on and talk with us. It's, it's really cool. And I really enjoy like the show itself. What really made you want to do a podcast and interview these people, especially wrestlers? So, all right. So I was on this podcast originally, which hi, Steve, whenever he decides to watch this, uh, it was called Frankensteiner present or Franken culture presents Frankensteiner. Um, my friend Marty, he, I've been a huge, we've been huge wrestling fans and he started this podcast with Steve. Um, and they brought me on just kind of like as a guest, but then like, I found myself with more availability. So I was like, Hey, if you guys need another guest, bring me on. And they did. Um, and then eventually became from just like a guest to like a regular, to a co-host. And then I brought on Chaz just as a guest spot. And nice. I guess Chaz, Chaz got bit by the podcast bug and was like, hey, man, I really want to do a show and just debate right topics. And I was like, oh, bet. Let's do this. And I ended up leaving Frankensteiner just to go start up the Three Count Podcast. And uh, yeah, we started it in December of 2018. And then it fully became ours January of 2019. And then uh, when I decided to go pro and start training, um, I, we got hit by COVID and obviously everything went to a shutdown. And Mr. Del Rio here knows this all too well, but he started a podcast called What Up Wrestler? <laughs> and uh, so when I kept What's watching up What's Up Wrestler, Wrestler yes. yeah, I started watching What's Up Wrestler and I was paying attention. I was like, bro, I can... I can do the same thing, like where I can reach out to wrestlers and just ask them like questions about like how they're working out since COVID or like what they're doing to help evolve their characters or, you know, what are they doing to what's been like their worst bumps, what's been like their favorite hardest hit, what's been their favorite rest, like their favorite wrestling match, <coughs> just ask questions. And so I found myself like bringing on Big Trouble Ben Bishop. We started talking and then we brought on my trainer Sicken. And then we brought on Studio 22. And then pretty soon after that, 
it was just like a ball of people who just wanted to come on and talk with us. And then I would go out and reach out and find people. So it's been blowing up since then. And I, I've genuinely enjoyed it. We've had guys who are former WWE stars. We've had guys who are currently in MLW. We've had guys who are tearing up at NEW. We've had people who've been a part of Invictus. We've, we've had so many great wrestlers, um, you know, and then I always go out and ask for suggestions. And Mr. Del Rio is one of the first people to hit me up and tell me, Hey, you should go interview this person. I'm like, I got it. And then I end up making friends with you know, <laughs> other people. So it's been, it's been cool. And just like getting out and just, you know, interviewing people has been, it's been a blast. It is a lot of fun interviewing people and uh, Red Dog, if I may say, it is uh, it is not easy to do podcasts. Uh, you have to put in the work if you want people to, you know, respect you and listen to your shit. Uh, what's the hardest thing about that? Uh, before we talk about your wrestling career, I want to sort of like bite, bite your tongue off a little bit with uh, a little bit of more podcast advice to the people. Uh, what is some advice you will give to someone who wants to do a podcast? What would you say? You, you, you're absolutely right. Like the number one thing that you got to do is you got to put in the work, like, and you have to be ready to hear no a lot. <laughs> I think, uh, I, I remember talking to Chaz one day and I was like, bro, I've sent out in a span of a week, I sent out 200 invites to the podcast and I got maybe 30 replies and every one of those replies right. I was able to actually bring on the show. Um, yeah, so you have to be ready to hear no, and then you just have to be ready not to be hearing anything at all. Um, but once you start bringing on guys, then you can start asking for them to go talk to other people and then bring you on as, uh, you know, and, and talk you up. So that way, cause the one thing that you'll end up learning is that it's all about networking. And once you, once you're able to get one or two, you can ask them to, to throw you people and then you go out and talk to them and then they'll throw out more. It's kind of like that scene in Wayne's world where like you tell two friends and then they tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends and you go on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like, like, like uh, red dog just said for the people who do want to do a podcast, uh, the, the number one thing I would tell you, and like he just said as well, uh, be prepared to hear the word. No, you're going to hear it a lot. Or like you said, be prepared not to get any replies back at all. But guess what? It's okay. Because if you're thinking about interviewing wrestlers, there's thousands of wrestlers all over the place who you can interview. Just because you can't get that one in that one person you want to interview doesn't mean you'll never get them. Just keep pushing, keep pushing, and you'll get that person. That is some advice from two podcasters such as myself and the Red Dog. Uh, Red Dog. Uh, how did the Red Dog become a Red Dog? Tell us about your journey and your path into professional wrestling. All right. Well, let's be real. So a lot of people, um, I, I I hope a lot of my friends from back home are hearing this. So my real name is Clifford. That's my shoot name. Like that's that's not a play. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> um, so you can imagine, like all through elementary school, that's all you hear is. Clifford the Red Dog, Clifford the Big Red Dog, come here, boy. And like I used to get teased about it all the time, all the way from uh, kindergarten, all the way up until actually it, it never stopped. It just kept going. So like I used to get so mad about being called Red Dog and the Big Red Dog and getting made fun of. And I would be so mad and upset. And um, I think it was crazy, man. Like it was my sophomore year in high school. Like I was just like, you know, like if people are going to say this about me, like I might as well just own up to it and just own it. And so my junior year, I had a practice jersey from my high school football team, and it just said R-E-D-D-O-G-G. -G. And uh, people were like, why would you spell it that way? And one of my friends actually went to bat with, for me and was like, um, he goes, it's because that's how he wants to spell it. And I got his name. I was like, yo, actually, this is what it is. This is going to be me now. And so D-A-W-G was because of the Georgia Bulldogs, you know, go dogs, even though I'm a Husker fan personally. Um, but yeah, and I changed it over to that, and then I just ran with it from there on. And then like through college, and going into the military, and getting out, and you know, it's it the name's been with me ever since. Like it's gone through so many transitions, and someone will put it out there like, oh yeah, Cliff used to rap, blah 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 blah, and Cliff writes poetry, and he does all this other stuff. Yeah, 
it's the red dog name itself has been with me everywhere. Uh, it was my call sign in the military. Like I just, it never escaped. And so I just, I took it, embraced it and made it me. And this is who you get. <laughs> you know that term, uh, you learn something new every day, uh, nerds and uh, Clifford. Uh, so, uh, so here's the thing. I know Clifford, the big red dog of a TV show. Massive fan of it growing up. I loved it. I just got that reference with your name and your Clifford name. I'm an absolute idiot. I should have guessed, like, but as you're telling the story, I'm like, oh, Clifford, the big red dog. Yeah. Good one. You'd now be I surprised. You'd be surprised how many people, like, it just hits them. And they're like, whoa. Like, I never thought about that way. I'm like, yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, like, I got it tattooed. Like, I got a red dog tattooed. <laughs> And I'll never forget, like, the day I got this done, right? So I got it done. Nice. I walked into my friend's room. This was, my, this was when I was in the military. I, I just randomly wanted to get a tattoo. So I walked in, and I told my friend, I was like, hey, man, do you want to get a tattoo? And he was like, yeah, sure. He never even had a thought. <laughs> we just jumped in the car. We were in Hawaii. Uh, we stopped at this place called Bonsai in Iea. And, uh, yeah, I sat down in a chair, and I, I told the guy, I was like, I want that dog tattooed on me in red. And, um. He's like, all right, cool, I guess. And they they thought they thought I was drunk. And so they're like, have you been drinking tonight? I was like, no, 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 100% sober, bro. So as he's tattooing me, he's coloring in, he's like, I just got to ask, man, why did you want to get this dog in red? And I was like, well, my first name's Clifford. He stopped. He put the pen down. He walked off. And then he came back. He sat down. He's like, sorry, man. He's like, I've been laughing outside for like the last five minutes because I never thought about this. And he's like, this is amazing. And I was like, yeah, man, it's like, this is what happens when you get bullied all through school and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you just end up owning what you got and then you just run with it. Yeah, run with it. And so he thought that was awesome. And I was like, yeah, it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, you said you were in the military. Uh, how long were you in the military for? What was that uh, experience like for you? Yeah, I was uh, six years active duty Air Force. Um, somebody's going to put it out there, call it Chair Force. Uh, but yeah, I was six years active in the Air Force. I was stationed out of uh, Hawaii uh, for five years, and I did a tour in Iraq for eight months. Wow. Good for you. Well, thank you for your service. Uh, uh, it means a lot to all Americans who are listening. Uh, wrestling, man. Tell us about your journey into wrestling. Uh, what was it like stepping foot into the ring for the very first time? <laughs> so what's funny is that everybody's journey kind of starts off the same where you just kind of start in a world that you're not supposed to be in. And uh, I remember taking my first real bump. Um, thank you, by the way. Uh, but I took my first real bump and uh, man, I, I felt like I just, it wasn't something I was used to. Like my whole body just kind of shook. And like, I was like, I don't know what just happened, but I really, really like this. And so <laughs> one of my friends was like, hey, man, I know a guy who trains. We're going to send you to him because they, they're like, you don't belong back here. And I was like, that's fine. And so I went, I met with uh, my trainer and we started bumping. And I just, it's kind of really where I just took off, man. Uh, one of my good friends, Chris Idol, he's like, he talks about all the time. He's like, he wants to be the jump, jump off point and he wants to help people accomplish their dreams. And my dream was to become, go pro and become a wrestler. And so he helped me, point me in a direction. And, you know, as soon as I hit the ring, like, that's what it was. And then I hit the ring in January of 2020, started training. And then March came and the national shutdown happened because of COVID. <laughs> During COVID, uh, I know you said you uh, started training in January. And like two months later, we were all shut down, which was a very terrible time for all of us. Uh, how were you able to kind of keep such a positive mindset during that entire time? Well, I mean, it was it was kind of helpful for WWE to be running their shows, so I could watch and pick and learn, and then I go back and watch like past of like past wrestling matches and pick pick out things that I enjoyed about that about matches and start adding it to the character that I wanted to put together. And then I obviously with like two weeks we had we just couldn't go nowhere, so I would be watching like movies and TV shows that all had to deal with like the kind of character that I wanted to put together. So once that all kind of like started forming, once May opened up and, you know, I was talking to other wrestlers about, you know, how, like how they're doing and what they're doing. Uh, once May opened up and I was like, all right, I'm back in the ring training and running. So, I mean, you know, it was, it was tough. Cause I mean, I was still doing like, 
I was trying to do yoga like five days a week, <laughs> still trying to put in work. So I right. mean, it, it was it was tough, but I just knew like this is this is where I want to be. Like this this sport, I enjoy so much. And there's I I was an amateur wrestler for 10 years, two years in college, actually crazy enough. Shout out to my friend, Roman Roselle, who, you know, he's been on AEW Dark a couple times, but he, um, you know, as I saw it, like, he was keeping moving, I was keeping moving too. Cause I was like, I just, I was like, this is, this is the dream. This is the goal. And this is where I want to be. And, you know, when you, when you want something bad enough, it doesn't really matter what's in your way. You're going to go get what you want to go get. And that's, this is what I wanted to do. So Absolutely, dude. Hell yeah. Great words of it, uh, of advice right there. You said everything opened up in May. You got back in the ring for the first time after this big national shutdown. What's going through your mind? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you are you anxious? What what what's up? What's up with your mind up there? So actually funny thing, like in May, when everything started opening back up in May, I got back in a ring and started hitting the ropes again. I just wouldn't take a bump because I was like it's weird because like once you start bumping like all the time, you stop doing it. And pretty much everybody will tell you this. You get kind of nervous about bumping because you're like, I don't I don't really want to bump, but I don't I got to. So when I hit my first bump again, like I was like, all right, bet I'm back to what I want to do. And I just started going all over again. Um, and then I was getting ready to debut. Uh, so my trainer was like, Hey, I think you're good to go. We've been working with you a lot. Like you're here. I was at um I was at his house every every weekend. I was just there for like five or six hours just rolling and bumping and and doing stuff and i'm getting ready to debut in late august right with uh scwa out of glendale west virginia and i hit this role i do a three-quarter lucha i do a lucha roll a three-quarter roll as you guys might want to know it um but i rolled wrong and i actually tore the muscle off my uh on my abdomen Ooh. and uh yeah so i was I was in pain. I remember just, I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk. Like I was just in pain and, um, ended up going to like urgent care. They all thought they had like a hernia. Come to find out that I actually just, I had a tear in the abdomen. I had to take rest. What made it crazy was, and I tell people this, like, like I said, man, if you want this bad enough, you're going to do what you want to do to make it happen. So I tore my abdomen on a Saturday. I came back Sunday to the ring with a pad and a pen and just took notes because mental reps are just as important as physical reps. And I was taking notes and jotting down notes and things that I wanted to do, add stuff to this, take stuff away from that, add this sequence, take that sequence away, do this spot, hit this, hit this move. And this, these were things that I wanted to do. So I just did it. And I just kept taking notes. And for the next eight weeks, I was at, I was at my trainer's house just every day watching film and just taking notes and twice it was it was eight weeks 16 practices that's all i did was take notes yeah wow. and then october 3rd came and uh another show opened up for scwa and i showed up and i and i got to work and i got my first match with uh ron holiday actually nice what was that like for you to finally after you know those months of missing out uh, all those, all those practices, you weren't able to step into the ring. What was it like finally being able to wrestle in front of an actual crowd? I think I would have been more nervous if I didn't have uh, my best friend Chaz with me. Otherwise, it would have been a disaster. I probably would have been a lot more nervous. I was pretty nervous anyway, um, but because Chaz and I had shown up to SCWA on August, I actually got to do like this kind of run-in spot um, and just kind of like you know, make my debut, but not really make my wrestling debut. But uh, that following October, like I was, I was tell telling people, I was like, I think I'm going to throw up, bro. <laughs> like I'm super nervous. And everybody's like, nah, you'll be fine. I'm like, no, bro. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> and so I had that happen. Right. And then the next day I was booked for C3W um, and I worked uh, with Ron Holiday again. And then I got to work with Darius Carter nice which i was yeah at first i was like i i i don't really know you know I, i'm still new to the indie scene i'm still trying to figure stuff out and i go back and doing research and i was like oh yeah i definitely didn't belong in a ring with him <laughs> yeah Darius <laughs> carter man he's he's up there as like one of the top indie guys which yeah. is actually a question we have from a, uh, a user from nerds on uh, nerds of wrestling member who is your favorite wrestler on the indies my favorite wrestler in the indies. Um, actually, 
I don't know if I have just one. I really don't. I really don't. Um, I probably, if I was going to be honest and just say like every, I would have probably like six or seven that I would consider my favorites, right? So, I mean, Jordan Oliver, Myron Reed, Darius Carter, uh, Beastman. Um, let's see, uh, Kai McKenna, who's yeah. also been on the show. I'm a huge fan of hers, as well as um, Diamante. I mean, I know she's signed to uh, AEW, but she's also out on the scene. She's massively awesome. Uh, just, man, uh, Gino told you so. Yep, of course. He's, he's, yep. he's the GOAT. He's great. Gino's <laughs> awesome. Shout out he's, to Gino. Um, yeah, Sicken would be another one. Like, you know, there's there's a lot of wrestlers out there that I genuinely like find myself like gravitated towards because they have like such like a unique energy to them. And I just I like like talk to people and picking up brains and learning from them. So there's a there's a few. So that's why I was like when I think of favorite wrestlers, like there's just there's way too many. But there's one that I want to punch in the mouth. And that's 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 Brett Ryan Gosling. Like, yeah, BRG Ooh. about to catch hands. <laughs> Calling up BRG on the Nerds of Wrestling Podcast. He, this man was talking about me and my favorite character of all time. Like, you do not talk trash about Little Mac. I don't care, okay, if it's about Smash or not. You are going to get smashed if you talk about my man, Little Mac. <laughs> Ooh. Uh-oh, shots fired, shots fired, BRG. I hope you're ready for a comeback day. <laughs> um, we're talking about so many wrestlers that you admire in the indies. My question to you is, is that – what promotions do you have your eyes set on? Oh man, it's a it's a, it's a who's who's list of promotions that I would like to work at. So uh, Invictus is definitely one of them I would love to work at. I'm I'm a huge massive fan. Uh, GSW, so Global Syndicate Wrestling. I love uh, Game Changer as well. Um, Beyond Wrestling. I mean, I love Beyond. Uh, we got to go with uh, Generation Championship Wrestling, right? So. They're a great. They're a great bunch of guys over in Tampa. Um, I would love to go work at Reality of Wrestling. I would love to be at uh, Cactus League. I'd love to be at PWG. I would love to be at. Oh, just there's so many <laughs> to talk about NEW as well. <laughs> so I mean, let's just say everything. Every, yeah, I'm like, there's, right? there is no, there is no promotion that I at this point like I wouldn't wouldn't want to work for. I mean, there's a who's who's list out there. I was I was listening to an interview with uh, Dan Housen where he was talking about a promotion, and I think it's in Chicago or it's in Cleveland. I can't remember, but the guys there they wrestle in a 1920s 1930s theme, and I was like, bro, like I want to be one of those characters. <laughs> that sounds badass. That sounds right. really cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what promotion was that again that you just said? I can't. I have to go back and look and look for the interview. I I, I genuinely can't remember, but I just the idea behind it. I was like, oh, I didn't. I was like, I didn't even know that was a that was a thought. Like to that's the thing right. that I've been learning. Like when I'm going back through and like talking about promotions, like finding out that there's legitimately when people say there's something for everybody in wrestling, there really is something out there for everybody. 100% agree. Could not agree with you more. Let's go back to your debut a little bit about wrestling. You said you were able to wrestle with um, Holiday and uh, Darius Carter. You, you looked up Darius Carter and you were like, why am I wrestling this man? What are your thoughts on Darius as, as a wrestler? Oh, he's such he's an amazing talent. Like, there's no doubt. There's a reason why he is the most prestigious wrestler in the business like <laughs> he really is um i just yeah i can't say enough i want to run it back i can't wait to get in a ring with him again at some point in time we will cross paths there's not even an if it's just a win uh but yeah genuinely he he's an amazing talent and he's like it, it's been crazy because like my career is it's not that long right like i haven't been in that long and uh you know i got to work with beast man who's an incredible talent as well i i didn't come out victorious. I took a big slam. It is what it is. But you know, he was he. You know, he's somebody that I could. I want to run back another one with. You know, uh, I've got to work like in a ring with Sicken. I got to work with you know, like Ron. I've said Michael Zamidio. There's been a huge list of names of people that I feel like I've had. A, I've had my own list of people that I wanted to work, and I've been able to knock those that list out. So 
it's going to keep growing. It's going to keep getting better. And I, I genuinely can't wait. Uh, that's amazing, dude. I cannot wait to see what your goals are going to be after this whole craziness. And like this whole craziness is over. Let's get it. Let's hope it's over for now. Uh, you know, we, I just, I really am rooting for you, bro. I really hope to see you at some more shows. Maybe in Connecticut in the near future. I hope to get you, you know, you get booked up here. Uh, after this whole thing is over and everything, what are your, like, major goals? Like I just said, it's over, but, you know, what are your goals after this? Yeah, it's it's crazy, man, because, like, the goal, the goal is always just to get in the ring, right? And so... There's always been a dream of mine, um, and I've 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 been wanting to be in this world, um, in this sport since like you know since pretty much I was like five six years old. So now I have to dream bigger. And when you hit one milestone, then you got to keep looking for the next one. So I don't know, man. Right now it's just how much further can I go travel? How much further can I go go meet people? How much further? What what else can I? What what more do I want to keep going after? And I know a lot of people's goal would be like, well, don't you want to get into WWE or AEW or Impact? Sure, if that's in the cards. But at this point in time, man, I'm just happy that I get to be in a ring and work with so many talented people. So to me, the the goal's already been achieved. Like the dream's already here. I'm just now nah, I just get to bask and play in the dream of, of this world that I'm in. I love it, dude. Uh Red Dog Clifford, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the uh the show today. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I hope to get you on again in the near future. Oh man, you know, you know, I'm always there's always like two podcasts that I'm always gonna set out time for the mm -hmm. side, right? And this is one of them. Let's be real. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate your support as always, man. Uh, but for one last time, drop those plugs. Where can the nurse find you? Yeah, so if you guys want to, you can find me on Twitter and IG at the underscore red dog 85. You can also find that same one on TikTok. Pretty much anywhere you can find any social media platform, it's probably there at the underscore red dog 85. My link tree is the same. If you guys want to go buy my merch, you guys can see I have like this t shirt right there or this one right here. Uh, that's at whatamaneuver.net. Um, you can find those. And then also you can find uh, right there the three count podcast t shirts um, are on our pro wrestling tees. Um, you guys can find the podcast on YouTube and Facebook. We go live with the debate show every Sunday. And then we try to come out with new interviews every Tuesday and Thursdays, although I've been kind of slacking on that because <laughs> too real. it's a lot to do. <laughs> um, life, you know, life, we're just busy. <laughs> life, you know, because right. like I'm also I'm also a dad. <laughs> so <laughs> like <laughs> so I have a lot of things kind of going on. Um but yeah, so you can find the Three Count Podcast on YouTube as well as Facebook. And then you guys can also check us out on anchor.fm um, under the Three Count Pod. And if you guys want to go check me out on Nerds of the Round Table, which is a podcast where we talk about comic stuff. So whether we're talking about TV shows or movies or just casting it or even what's going on on Superman and Lois, you can catch us talk about all that stuff there. There you go, nerds, man. You heard everything from the man himself, Red Dog. Red Dog, thank you again so much for coming on the show. Uh, it has been an absolute blast. I hope you stay safe and just chill, man. Just live life. Uh, this has been a podcast. This has been an episode of What's Up Wrestler, a podcast by Nerds of Wrestling. I am your host, Justin Del Rio. Peace out, nerds. <laughs>